In today's lesson, we'll be learning how to convert factored form to standard form. In our previous lesson, we learned that a quadratic relation is just a type of pattern, and this pattern can be represented with an equation. You can represent a quadratic relation in factored form or standard form. In factored form, the variable of a tells you the direction of opening, whether the parabola is opening upwards, smiling, or opening downwards, frowning. Meanwhile, the variables of r and s are related to the x-intercepts. Remember, you have to change the signs. In standard form, the variable of a, again, represents the direction of opening. The variable of b doesn't really tell you anything useful about the parabola, while the variable of c tells you the y-intercept. Now, you can convert factored form to standard form using the process of expanding. And you can also convert standard form back to factored form using factoring. Today, we're going to be focusing on expanding. In our first example, we have an equation of a quadratic relation in factored form. We want to use the process of expanding to convert it to standard form. The table on the right is going to help us do that. We're going to start with the variable of x, and we're going to place it over here. Next, we're going to take negative 1, and we're going to place it over here. Next, we're going to take the variable of x, and we're going to place it over here. And last, we're going to take negative 3, and we're going to place it over here. We're going to start by taking this term and multiplying it by this term, and the answer is going to go into this empty box. Since we're multiplying terms, that means we're going to be using the product rule. And the first step of the product rule is to look at coefficients. Since there is no coefficients, that means there is a hidden 1. And what you're going to do is you're going to multiply coefficients. So 1 times 1 is going to give you 1. Next, we want to take a look at the bases. The base over here is x, and the base over here is x. Bases stay the same, so we're going to write x over here. Lastly, we're going to take a look at exponents. There is no exponent here, and there is no exponent here, which means there's going to be a hidden 1. And we like to add these exponents. So 1 plus 1 is going to give you 2. We're going to repeat this process by multiplying this term with this term. And the answer is going to go in this empty box. We already know the coefficient here is positive 1. And the coefficient here would be negative 1. And we like to multiply coefficients. Therefore, positive 1 multiplied by negative 1 is going to give you negative 1. Next, we're going to take a look at the bases. We already know that the base here is the variable of x. But what about there? There is no base. Therefore, bases are going to stay the same. So I'm going to write a variable of x. Next, we want to take a look at the exponents. We already know the exponent here is 1, and there is no exponent here because there is no base. Therefore, that exponent of 1 is just going to stay the same over here. We're going to repeat this process again by multiplying this term with this term and writing the answer in this empty box. The first thing you want to do is take a look at the coefficients. The coefficient over here we know is already positive 1. But what about over here? The coefficient here would be negative 3. And we want to multiply coefficients. So negative 3 multiplied by positive 1 is going to give you negative 3. Next, we want to take a look at bases. We already know that the base here is a variable of x. But what about here? There is no base over here, which means bases stay the same. So I'm going to rewrite the variable of x right over there. And last, we know that the exponent over here is 1, and there is no exponent over there since there is no base. Therefore, that exponent of 1 is going to stay the same. And finally, we're going to multiply this term by this term, and we're going to write the answer in this empty box. This should be a little bit more straightforward, since all you have is negative 3 multiplied by negative 1. And that is going to give you positive 3, since a negative times a negative is going to give you a positive. At this point, we're going to take these 
four terms and we're going to place them in this bracket. So I'm going to copy out 1x to the power of 2 minus 1x to the power of 1 minus 3x to the power of 1 and positive 3. At this point, you want to look for like terms. Remember, like terms have the same base and same exponent. These two terms would be like terms. So when you combine these like terms, you're going to get negative 4x to the power of 1. So bases are going to stay the same and exponents are going to stay the same as well. This 1x to the power of 2 is going to stay exactly the same. And this positive 3 is going to stay exactly the same as well. Since we have a number in front of a pair of brackets, that means you're going to have to use the distributive property, which means everything inside is going to get multiplied by 1. And when you multiply anything by 1, it stays exactly the same. So this is going to remain 1x to the power of 2. This is going to remain negative 4x to the power of 1. And this positive 3 is going to remain the same. Before we finish up, let's clean this equation up. Generally speaking, you don't want a coefficient of 1, so I'm going to erase that 1. And we also don't like seeing exponents of 1, so I'm going to erase that exponent. In conclusion, we've just converted factored form to standard form.